let's get started. So welcome everyone to the first GSA, Designers for Learning, um, collaborative event and project with a Grace Centers for Hope. Uh, today's, today's meeting in, is an info session. And the info session is purpose is to make sure that we're all on the same page, all parties involved. We all understand uh, our roles and what's expected of us. And we all really have an opportunity to ask questions of each other in all the moving parts before we actually officially get started because right now we're in um, the jumpstart mode. So I will start with myself and then we'll pass it along down the line here um, in our agenda. Actually, let me share the screen. Okay, now I've, I've already placed the link inside of the chat box so you can access it either um, on your own or you can watch it here with me as I share my screen. Uh, so my name is Jason Engerman. I am um, the GSA president within AECT. That's the Association for Educational Communications and Technology. And I'm out of Penn State University. Uh, my uh, degree will be in learning design and technology. And uh, my current research is on boys and gaming. So my current role as facilitator, and I'm gonna introduce, uh, and I'll have the other facilitators introduce themselves, is to be a gateway and a support for the designers, the design team, um, of the Designers for Learning platform. Um, and that includes how the template works, um, how to manipulate the template, uh, where to get access of resources, and things of those natures. So, uh, Wendy, if you would introduce yourself. There we go, now I have audio. Hi, good afternoon everyone, I'm Wendy Gentry. I'm part of the Graduate Student Assembly. I'm the communications officer there and work very closely with Paige and Jason on a variety of initiatives and I'm very excited to join this project. I'm a PhD student at Virginia Tech in my final year. And at least that's what I promised my committee. <laughs> okay. uh, my dissertation research is in uh, like a historical study of theory going back about 60 years. And that's me. Look forward to working with all of you. Great. And we also have Paige Hale. Paige, you introduce yourself. Okay, can you all hear me? Yep. All right. Um, I'm Paige Hale. Um, I am a doctoral student at Moorhead State University in Kentucky. And I guess I got involved with all this because I have been very much involved in AECT's Graduate Student Assembly. And I was a student designer with the last group in the fall. So I kind of have a little bit um, of expertise on that. I'm at the end of my doctoral program. God willing, will be done in May. And um, I right now my research is on um, factors that affect graduate student membership in professional associations. And I'm really into, I come from a special ed background, so any kind of instructional support for students with disabilities. So I'm excited to work with everybody. Fantastic. Okay, so then next we have the design team. And these are the graduate students that are actually going to be doing the design for Grace Centers of Hope. And I'm not sure if. Where we have Carolina, if she's here. Let me look through here and see if Carolina's in with us. Carolina. All right, Carolina is not with us, and that's okay. But we do have Alexa Franklin Burrell out of Full Sail. So, Alexa, why don't you tell us about yourself? Uh, yeah, hi. Um, I am a. Uh, Graduate student at Full Sail University. I will be done with my degree, God willing, in June. Uh, I have a bachelor's in business administration. And uh, so instructional design is a, is a totally different shift for me. Um, but I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying the program that I'm in right now and uh, learning a whole lot. Learning a whole lot, and uh, I'm a mother of two. Very good. Okay, so then I know that um, Colleen Jackson, I didn't see Colleen. She might be here. Nope. 
No, no Colleen, but we do have Elaine. Uh, Elaine, I know I saw. Yes, uh, right. hang on one second. Here, I'll put my uh, video on. Can you see me? Hi, uh, my name is Elaine Redker, and I am a, I'm still struggling with the terminology a little bit. I passed my comps in um, the fall of 2014, and I'm working on my literature <laughs> review right now, and I am an ed tech PhD. And I also work full time for Arizona State University as a graphic designer. I, my undergraduate degree was in industrial design and graphic design. And I found that there was a lot of skill sets that translated from graphic design to ed tech. So nice to meet all of you. Happy to be here. Very nice. And welcome. Welcome. So Hannah Mudalo is next. I know Hannah's here. Let's unmute you. Gotcha. Oh, I am on mute. You, yes. Okay. And you're on. I got gotcha. you. Thank yep. you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So you can all hear me. My name is Hannah. I'm happy to be here and meet everyone face to face. Uh, that, that's, that's exciting. I am a graduate student at Oakland University uh, in Southeast Michigan. So I am halfway through the program and I'm expecting to complete the program by the end of this year. I am also working full-time for General Motors, and I am a um, impro process improvement uh, specialist with them, and um, I have a background in uh, computer engineering, so this is a completely different um, path, but I am looking at merging those two um, skills um analytical and qualitative and quantitative um expertise together for process and performance improvement so i'm very excited to be a part of this project fantastic thank you and welcome okay next we have holly holly's out of nova eat in southeastern i know holly is here there you are holly you're unmuted holly okay thanks jason yeah i'm trying to figure out how to turn my my video back on but this is a new venue for me mm -hmm. and so I'm, I'm very excited to be here I have I'm a doctoral student at Nova Southeastern and I have finished my my classes and I our concentration was not our focus was really not on instructional design it was more on the instructional technology aspect and the distance education. So I'm really looking forward to this opportunity to have a better handle on instructional design. So happy to be here and meet everybody. That's great. Welcome and thank you. Shulong, I don't think Shulong is in. Um, no, I don't think she's here. Okay, so we're gonna move on to Willette. I know Willette is, she's here. She's in the building. There you are, Willette, and your mic is off or audio is on okay great can you hear me yes can we can hear me? oh excellent uh good afternoon everybody i am a third year graduate student over at the university of south alabama started the program january 2012. i got my ba and ma at the university of south alabama my background is in sociology um currently a graduate assistant in what's called the innovation in learning center at the University of South Alabama, where I, along with other graduate assistants in the Instructional Design and Development Program, along with full-time staff, uh, teach workshops on the university's learning management system. We're using Sakai, and also teach workshops on technology to um, increase um, student interaction, and also um, technology used for pedagogy, such as StudyMate, Captivate, and um, I clickers teach I taught workshops on all of those and uh, excited to have this opportunity to gain this instructional design experience at the same time as contributing some good uh, to Grace Centers of Hope as well. So I'm looking forward to the project and uh, working with everybody, learning and uh, giving back to the community. Fantastic. Thank you. And we are happy to have you. Uh, I'm not sure if Zuhan Dai is here. If you are, 
you're gonna have to give a shout. I don't I don't think that um, no, and that's okay. All right, so it looks like we've got a wide ranging uh, a group of, of skills and talents across. Um, we're all across the U.S., right? Anyone outside the U.S.? No, I think we're all in in house here on the homeland. Um, so so this is this is fantastic and exciting. I know that we're going to do an exceptional job here with this project. So maybe introduce our faculty mentors too. Yes, you can. Um, so my faculty mentor that I will be working with in um, unit three is not here, Monica Rice Savvy. She's out of Penn State University. Um, right now she she's holding, I think she's gonna, she's going for a second uh, PhD um, in learning design and technology. And currently she's most likely at work but uh, we, will, we will meet and introduce with whatever group we're with. We'll have a meeting aside um, and separate. So, um, Wendy, I think, wants to introduce Dr. Ji Hyun Yu. And the faculty advisors have a role as a support system within the design process. So, go ahead, Wendy. You're on mute. On mute. Oh, can you hear me? I was yes, thinking. Yes, I am. Perhaps Dr. Yu could um, introduce herself and say a little bit about her background. Okay, uh, hello, my name is Jihan Yu. I'm a visiting assistant professor here at Virginia Tech. I'm so happy to join this program as a faculty advisor. So um, yeah, it was great honor to be invited by one of the best students in our program, Wendy. <laughs> so hopefully we will have a very um, dynamic and um, you know, great learning experience. Um, so yeah, happy to be here. Thank you. Fantastic. Yes, I was going to introduce them. Uh, I don't know if sure if Paige wanted to introduce um, Yvonne or Shaw, but I know that Yvonne can introduce herself, right? So Yvonne, Yvonne, <laughs> Yvonne can right. if she's if she's on. I'm yes, here. She she's okay. here. There you go. And I will start my video so you can actually see what I look like. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm Dr. Yvonne Earnshaw, and um, you know, I just wanted to sort of echo what you said as well. I'm, I'm really honored to be part of this program. I think um, it, it sounds like an excellent, I, I love the idea of students getting real world types of experience. Um, I came into my doctoral program with about 10 years of instructional design and development experience um, in a wide variety of industries, mostly high tech. And then went to went through a PhD program at Florida State and recently graduated last year and I'm on the faculty market now. Um, but I'm looking forward to working with uh, with a great team and, and seeing where this project can really lead us. Thanks. Fantastic. Okay, and now for designers of learning. So Jim Madrell happens to be the founder of Designers for Learning and she will be on the back end helping uh, the facilitators facilitate within designers for learning platform as well as helping us to maneuver and, and navigate uh, through this process because she's done it quite a bit before with her vast experience so she's housed in um, in chicago and she actually works for uh, old dominion university and she can introduce herself Great, thank you, Jason. And I really wanna welcome everybody. This is so exciting for me to watch this third iteration of the project. Um, I've been here since the beginning with Bonnie and with Courtney and with Kim, who are absolutely the best clients we could ever have, especially on this very unique pioneering venture, as uh, Vaughn mentioned, getting a unique opportunity for students to use their skills, practice their skills for the, for the good of uh, a nonprofit. And, I really can't thank you enough, the whole group of all of you, and I really want to thank um, Jason and Paige and, and Wendy for taking on this facilitation role that I've had historically. It'll be so fun to watch this next iteration to see how they take the project and, uh, and go with it. Um, but if you have any questions um, that are outside the realm of what uh, normally Jason and, and Paige and Wendy and, and the faculty advisors would help. Uh, feel free to drop me a note, but for the most part, I'm just going to be hanging out in the wings and making sure that the website stays up and things don't break. <laughs> so, <laughs> welcome to everybody. Fantastic. So, that is our design team as a whole, quite a bit of moving parts and, and support systems to make sure that um, we, can, we can make something uh, very relevant and sustainable 
um, for Grace Centers of Hope. And so now we're going to introduce Grace Centers of Hope. Today with us, we have Courtney Phillips and also Bonnie Shellnut. I'm not sure if Bonnie wants to talk or introduce herself, but Courtney uh, will be here to talk about who Grace Centers of Hope is, what they uh, are wishing and hoping to get out of this, as well as how to direct questions to Grace Centers. It's Grace Centers of Hope directly. So, Courtney Phillips, if you would. Thanks, Jason. Um, guys, like Jason said, my name is Courtney Phillips. Um, I'm the Education Specialist at Grace Centers of Hope. Uh, I've been there for about a year now. Um, and we have had um, a great experience working in the past with um, Designers for Learning. Uh, and so I want to say thank you to everybody for that. And thank you all for um, being interested in doing uh, this and designing this curriculum for us. Um, we're excited to get started again. Um, so Grace Centers of Hope, um, I don't know how much you guys know, is a homeless shelter. Most of our clients um, struggle with some kind of substance abuse issue. And so they were required to um, attend the GED program if they come in and don't already have their GED. Um, and so we do a lot of independent study and a lot of work one-on-one -on -one with tutors. Um, and so I know, I'll tell you a little bit more about my boss too, who can't be here, um, Kim Phillip. She's the Director of Career and Education Services and she has been at Grace for I think about three years. Um, and we are um, hoping to get um, three more modules out of this, obviously. Um, and you guys, we can talk about the topics later. Um, but um, we are hoping that there are modules that our students can get through um, pretty independently. Um, and we are just um, excited to be going through this again. Oh, sorry. And I um, will be the person to um, answer any of your SME questions. That would be me. So you can email me with those questions. There we go. Great. Bonnie, would you like to introduce yourself as well? Sure. sure. Um, uh, my name is uh, Bonnie Shelnut. I have my PhD from Wayne State University. And um, Hannah uh, is just down the road from me at Oakland University. I, I actually live right off of Walton, and I have a couple of granddaughters who attend uh, Oakland University. So uh, it was Hannah that was at Oakland University, I believe, that she was the one that said that. Um, my uh, primary emphasis when I did my doctorate was uh, in motivational theory, I, learning theory and motivation theory. I, I spent 18 years as a um, high school teacher in uh, speech and English. Then I went into this program and I uh, then worked in industry uh, for different companies and also in higher education, both as an instructor and as a designer and as a director of an entire design team. So uh, I came to this uh, program when I had a newsletter sent to me and I had a, a desire to do some volunteer hearing uh, for some worthy cause. And so I called Kim and she called me in and then I said, we need to get some really intelligent, hardworking people involved. And one of my colleagues from Wayne State uh, contacted or put me in contact with Jennifer Mandrell and we at uh, Madrell and we just have had a great time and I just appreciate uh, the number of hours and the talent that has been um, devoted to this project. So I'm happy to be a part of it and continuing to be a part of it. Fantastic. All right. So we're, we're all acquainted. We know who we are, where we come from, a little bit of background information, and I, I think that's exactly where we want to be. We want to make sure that we're all pretty comfortable with where we are and what we're, what we're doing. So to that extent, we need to look at the units. Um, I have a very brief synopsis, which I'll go over with you. And at each synopsis or unit, if uh, Courtney or Bonnie would like to add anything to it that, that may be missing, um, you, you sure enough can. And we'll just briefly just touch on what they are, and then we'll go over what the uh, platform looks like and how to navigate the platform and if we're going through our Jumpstart materials properly. So uh, looking at unit one, we've got science, and it looks like we're going to do the scientific method. Paige and Dr. Earnshaw will be um, taking over that. Um, is there anything that you guys wanted to add, Paige or Dr. Earnshaw? Um, I was actually thinking we had the history win, but oh. 
Okay, if, I'm sorry. If, I apologize. I don't know, you mark that out with Wendy and everybody, but um, no, nothing really to add at this point. I apologize. I have this we'll in the wrong spot. We'll do this No, that's that is that is my. Okay, uh, is that right, Wendy? This mistake. I don't know. Not one to steal anybody's. Okay. No, 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 no. I, I didn't know which one was which. I, I accidentally put them in the wrong place. So I apologize. Wendy and Dr. Yu will be doing the scientific method topic there. Okay. Is there anything that you wanted to add or talk about with that unit? No, Jason, I just might uh, add a couple of thoughts here. This is okay. a unit that was actually started um, last semester. And unfortunately, both of the designers that were assigned to this unit had life events happen that uh, required them to step away from the, the project. And so it, we got pretty far along. Um, they actually completed the design plan and the design plan went through the initial review process. So for those working on this team, um, we'll get you a copy, um, whoever ends up being assigned to it. And, and right now, I guess it's for sure it'll be Wendy and Dr. Yu. We'll make sure we, you get a copy of what they've started um, because it did, they did quite a lot of work. And then also the folks at Grace and then also Bonnie had the opportunity to offer some good feedback. So there is a, tight, a tad bit of a leg up on that unit. If you, did, if you, if you decide to take the, the unit one, there has been a bit of groundwork done on that. Fantastic. Right. So given a scientific problem, a student should be able to identify the order of the steps in a scientific method, identify the missing steps or steps in the scientific method, explain the steps in the scientific method and completion of, of this particular project that's already has a head start for you already. Great. So then in unit two, very briefly, um, it seems like it's going to be an overview of the United States history uh, with Paige and Dr. Earnshaw. It says instructional unit offers students practice opportunities related to an overview of all U.S. history as a topic is assessed on the GED test. Anything else to add, maybe, Jen? Any background history there? No. Um, actually, um, Courtney, maybe this would be a good time for you to um, explain to us when we talk about an overview and then how that relates kind of to the, the requirements on the GED test. I, um, we can share with that unit in particular. Um, I think it's actually in our jumpstart materials where that relates to the GED standards. Um, but did you want to pick up on that, Courtney? Uh, sure. Uh, so a lot of um, the history they need to know for the test, um, it's not a lot of specific details. Um, it's more about if they're given a quote or something like that, they can kind of place where that goes um, in the timeline of history. So if they're given something that happened in a year, they can kind of generally know, okay, that happened in the time of World War One or something like that. So this um, unit does need to be pretty broad, especially to fit it in uh, in that time limit. Um, just very, very um, broad information, broad overview. And I know there is um, a sheet in the educator's guide that really walks over um, all of the events that need to be included. Okay, great. And then in unit three, that's the unit that myself and, and Dr. Rysavi will be um, facilitating. It says it may be longer than an hour. So these other units are roughly an hour of instruction. That is um, generally what we're doing. Um, in this particular unit, they're gonna learn multiplication, division, um, best than addition and subtraction. So I, I put that note there because um, Courtney, I believe it was, said that they the population tend to learn the multiplication and the division part best first, and then the addition and the subtraction of fractions second. So I also have flipped classroom concepts, and that's because Khan Academy does a good job of um, giving instruction on how to use this stuff. And there's also TED, TED Ed, um, if you ever use that, and that does a good job too. Um, so those are things that may be embedded in this particular unit. Is there anything else you wanted to add, maybe, Courtney, to that unit? Uh, I think you got it all, Jason. Okay, fantastic. So what I wanted to do then is, is show and point to our hub. Okay, our hub. Our hub is, is located at the um, Designers for Learning website. I have, to move, I have to move a couple of things over so I can actually get to this site. So this is... This is our website, and that, this particular web part is, is in our design studio. 
within the design studio. This is section five of the jumpstart material. It spells out pretty much exactly what the responsibilities are. It gives due dates. And it also, I believe, breaks down the units even further than we just did because that was just a synopsis, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And I think I am mistaken. Oh, there we go. Do it two. No, this, this, this talks about what you will be doing. What is your deliverable? Yeah, unit, uh, you go to section three, Jason, that'll have those three units um, in okay. section three. Right. So section three. Section three lays out specifically what those units are. There we go. Okay, the unit one scientific method um, with links to what the standards look like that we're supposed to be using. Unit two, social studies, it's an overview with the links with the GED services. Very good. And then, right. Okay. So team project responsibilities, deliverable due dates. Your very first deliverable is due February 23rd. Um, but before that, there are some check marks along the way. Um, like next week, I believe on Tuesday, um, you should be completed your, the jump start. You should be completed one through six. And we get into, actually you should be completed your, um, your reflection section and that's what section six asks you to do after going through all these materials which are all updated thanks to um, Courtney Kim Bonnie and Jen they've updated all the materials they're up to date the links are active and working well they're pretty much self-explanatory the literable prototype will be due March 30th okay and these are other links to the uh, to the assessment guides for educators. Um, is there anything in particular that you wanted to talk about with these, um, Courtney? Um, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, they might be good to glance through depending on your topics because they are pretty specific um, mm -hmm. in some of the things they go over. Um, I think that's about all. Yeah, and um, I'll add my two cents. Um, I, as you're heading into the design plan, I think the biggest challenge I've watched the students go through is knowing how to set scopes and boundaries around your unit because obviously a topic for example such as you a summary of u.s history can be pretty broad and so if you go to those um, ged specific materials they actually will guide you to specific topic areas that you'd want to hone in on um, as opposed to others and then also when you're setting your objectives it also helps to, to um, get an understanding of how the students are assessed on that material, which may help you then when you're refining what your objectives are for your unit. And again, it's more just to kind of put a box around things because it's, these topics can get pretty big once you start digging into it. And um, as Courtney was saying before, you know, keeping things to a, roughly an hour's material, review material for the students, it sounds like, oh, that's a slam dunk, but actually the problem tends to become you have so much material to cover. How can we pare it down yet be um, still meaningful in terms of preparing the students for their assignments? And that's when I tended to point students to the GED material to help them do that. Very nice. Thank you. Well said. Um, so the next bit is what does this thing look like? What does it look like um, when, we're, when we're done? How should we format it? And we, we have the style guides there. Jen's uploaded those. Uh, pretty much um, laid out pretty succinctly. We're talking about objectives, learning level for the adult students, grammar and punctuation. It's all, it's all listed here. Um, we also have a PowerPoint template, which is located on that same page. And the final deliverable due May 4th. So all these things are, are pretty well laid out um, for us to look at and to know exactly what we're gonna do. I confirm the schedule. I believe that this is the schedule of events. I think this is the total schedule. Okay, no. No, this is, yes, yes this is. So this is, this is the total schedule laid out, uh, plain, 
plainly. February 2nd, we have our individual design reflections due. February 16th, uh, number two, your second design reflection. And then the design plans are due that next week. And then in March, we have other due dates. Uh, design reflection three, draft prototypes, which we just uh, talked about. And April, the same thing. This, this is all laid out pretty succinctly. So the action steps, okay, and then we'll open it up for questions. The, the action steps for us right now, what should we be doing right now um, as designers? We should be finishing and looking through all those materials that are in the jumpstart. But we should be making sure that we understand those materials in the jumpstart. If not, uh, reach out to myself or Wendy or Paige to help you understand them, what those things are. Um, the other thing that needs to be done, hopefully by Friday, which Wendy, I believe you wrote in the chat, is identify which units you'd prefer. So I would rank them in order because we're not going to be able to accommodate everyone, but rank them so that by the weekend, we can have the nine graduate students and des designers, I call it designers, um, divided into their teams and so that we can move forward. I believe that's all from me, unless there are questions and gaps that uh, Jen or, or Courtney or Wendy would like to fill, uh, Wendy and Beige. Not so much. Okay, so how about we open it up for questions um, for everybody. Um, we have the faculty advisors have, may have questions. We have... We have other people that may have questions. Uh, this, is, this is Elaine. Hello. And hi, I'll turn my video on here. Um, for the reflections, is there a specific, you know, we're all, we're all sort of like writing these long things. I mean, you don't want, uh, you know, 15 pages. I just, do you have a length? Do you have a suggestion about what in what you want to hear from us in our reflections or is it just totally personal whatever we come up with so jen i, I think that you said something. That one? yes could you sure no problem yes. yeah the whole idea um of the reflections are as you're saying very individual um as you can tell even from our interface here there aren't a lot of opportunities for us to work together one-on-one -on -one, and we found the reflections to be really helpful for that Okay. And so, um, clearly, you know, the more information you put out there, the more feedback of, of you know, your, your team can give, your, not your team, but the, the facilitator can um, help you with. Um, but, yeah, as you say, also, you know, it'd be kind of silly to make 15-page answers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, yeah. you know, just kind of keep them informal. They're, they're, the audience is truly just you and the facilitator assigned to your unit. Um, it's not, it doesn't even go to your team. So if it is an opportunity, if things aren't working, we've had that in the past, unfortunately, when things aren't working great on a team, we can step in and try to, you know, smooth some things over. Unfortunately, as we all know, working on teams, these things can happen. Sure. Um, and so it's an opportunity also then for you as a designer to really uh, delve into those things that you would like to work on more. Mm -hmm. And so um, this, the question prompts are guided toward that, especially this first one. Uh, the questions are, are geared toward what are your strengths and weaknesses and how can we use this project to help you develop things that you'd like to work on. Um, and then also uh, we're going to hit you with a first question on once you have been assigned to one of the three units, what's your gut? What do you think this unit's going to look like? Um, and it's going to be very, very rough. And it's not supposed to be an easy question at all, but we have to start someplace. And so one of our next webinars that um, we're going to be having that Jason will, um, and the team will schedule is when you start pitching your ideas. And um, that was a critique that um, actually Courtney and Kim and Bonnie and um, some of the other folks that were part of the prior project said is that um, we kind of started a little bit late in the game finding out what the students' ideas were when we waited until the, the des written design plan. And that mm -hmm. kind of put us behind the eight ball. And so I'm kind of giving a long-winded answer to your question, but really these, these design reflections are important in that it is that opportunity for you as a designer to start articulating what your ideas are for the unit, 
um, how you're going to bring your skill set to the table, um, and how you can use this experience to try to, um, to enhance your skill set. Um, so they are really, um, again, a, a vehicle for you as a, as a designer to grow, but also to become a, a dialogue that we, unfortunately, in a virtual setting, we don't have a lot of opportunity to have. So. Was there a minimum word limit on that, on those? No, you know, sometimes they're really short, you know, people right. are busy. Um, but, you know, obviously, the more it's like anything in life, the more you kind of put your heart into it, the more you're going to get out of it. So if you have the time and Paige, actually, you, you know, you're a great person to answer this question, Paige, because you just did this last semester. And you also wrote phenomenal reflections. Do you want to? Oh, wow. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you kind of jumped in before I did. I was going to try to say, yeah, don't don't let the reflections stress you at all. Um, sometimes, especially my partner was good about this saying, we're having difficulty with such and such. And then when okay. we come back to the next webinar, magically they discuss it, you know, and maybe not say it was us who was having the problem, you know, so that way we were able to get our concerns, but no, they weren't, don't stress about them at all. I wouldn't. So. Okay. No, I, just, <laughs> I just didn't know. Yeah. Good question. Any others? Okay, well, if nobody else is going to ask any more questions, I'll ask a lot. How about that? <laughs> Great. Um, so generally, the deliverables will kind of be in the form of the written instructions uh, or the written plan and then like a PowerPoint presentation that will that be something that will go into articulate I the, one of the questions on the survey for the original uh, proposal was how much experience do you have with articulate and so I'm kind of wondering does this go into articulate when it's all done or what you know, why did you ask that question? Can I take that one, Jason? Sure, you can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. well, let me just step, sorry, let me just talking, step back. So yes. Let me just give you a tad bit of history, which I think helps to contextualize some of this. And this comes up every time. Because PowerPoint, as we all know, is completely boring, you know, in terms of how, how it could be. Um, our, our main goal for this entire project is to get phenomenal prototypes developed within PowerPoint. Okay. We then will go for funding and be able to do this correctly um, in terms of a, a proper development platform as well as a platform for the students to be able to access things. So right now we're, we're working with the technology we have as, as well as the technology that Grace has available to them. Okay. And so um, what's worked out for them for the time being and for us as designers um, and with, and with the skill sets we tend to have with the designers is to, um, to build out our prototypes and our final deliverable within a PowerPoint template. And, um, and then to your point, if we find people who are really interested and motivated in helping us take it to the next level, we'll do that as a sidebar project. Okay. But for the purpose and the, uh, the aspect of our um, deliverables to, to Grace right now, it's, it's all within the PowerPoint template. Okay, great. Yeah. Um... That question particularly really interested me because I am very interested in um, working in Articulate. I know Captivate a bit, um, and I've actually done some other PowerPoints that um, team projects at school that wound up being, uh, you know, kind of converted to Articulate basically. And so uh, for me personally, that was something that. I found uh, really interesting about potentially working on this project was to have that opportunity to try to start learning and working and articulate because that, unfortunately, even though Captivate is much less expensive to buy an individual license, that seems to be kind of where a lot of educational institutions are sort of headed with articulate and things like that. So, yeah, anyway. I love it. And let's, let, let's keep that, um, you know, that, that idea open, you know, with the idea that at a minimum we'll, you know, keep it in the PowerPoint template, but based on, um, well, another, and again, I'm really getting an inside baseball here, but we unfortunately yeah. had, we had some students in the first uh, 
prototype who used the free version of Articulate and unfortunately oh. didn't, didn't convert it for us before their uh, thing expired. And so we were left with no deliverables. Yeah. So, you know, they, they were able to turn it in and get what they needed done within their classes. But unfortunately, the, the artifacts are now, you know, in the ether. They're <laughs> not available to us anymore. So that was kind of also kind of our stepping back saying, well, well let's, at least, let's at least get a benchmark of uh, PowerPoint for right now. Okay. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. And we created like, uh, you know, all the transitions in PowerPoint that then I guess do kind of a lot of those transitions and things like that. And some, some of the tool tips, um, there weren't great, like, you know, PowerPoint isn't great for like mouse over events and stuff like that terribly. Like if you click on one thing, something else pops up. It's not terribly awesome for that, but you know, so we did, we did create a bunch of those like, things sliding in that then uh, worked out in the art articulate version and stuff like that. So, so yeah, it, it sounds really interesting and maybe that's something this summer or something. I don't yeah. know. Uh, may I <clears throat> make a comment? This is Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Is that, uh, uh, number one, uh, I have, uh, uh, when I worked at Strayer, the team that I was in charge of, they used, uh, we used PowerPoint as the basic, uh, authoring tool and then we converted it using captivate and articulate and so forth okay um, but the major thing is that uh, we want to get as Jennifer mentioned we have to get a baseline down sure. and, what, and what you provide to grace must be able to be edited yeah and, by grace okay yes yeah. So, yeah and so i think that there are many things that maybe e e some of the designers may want to add um, later but mm -hmm. we, er, everything that needs that can be added or should that's added should be able to be in the final version of whether it is a powerpoint show or what it, you know anything that's integrated whether it's macros or whatever is that okay. so that we would be able to uh then what we are what we would do is save it down as a power powerpoint show we would save it down in the template first and then as a powerpoint show that when the student opens it they can't edit it but that right. the instructors at uh grace centers are able to edit it okay, okay. um and so this is just sort of, I'm sorry, the technical side of me because I have worked with, um, I'm, I work on a Mac and I know that there are times where, okay, so like I have a version of PowerPoint that's newer mm -hmm. and the version that somebody else has and fonts and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So are those things um, in the guidelines for us to be sure that we're only working at like PPT, not PPTX, and we're only using certain fonts and things like that, or? Yeah, the, the fonts uh, we have listed there okay. uh, as Arial. Yeah, I have, and, and the template is done in those, is okay. in those fonts, okay? Okay. okay. Uh, the, um, the, as far as it being converted, what we advise uh, and, and is that you would make sure that it, if you're working on a Mac, that you would then try to replicate it on uh, one that would be used at Grace Centers. And so maybe that's where you send it and say, does this one work? Okay. Uh, what we've done when I worked in the in industry is that we would make sure that we had the client's environment. Uh, and we just don't have that expense, right? And you don't have you don't have the ability to, to get our environment. But, but what, uh, we have we're using Windows, okay, you know, and, and uh, uh, regular desktop computers. They uh, they have flat screens. Uh, I had asked at one time with Kim about should we have a list of our technical capabilities, mm -hmm. and they just don't have the time or the resources to do that for us to okay. provide us you know, what, what those are I just know that it's regular desktop office you know they have office we have uh, PowerPoint and Word I ask if they're going to be using Excel and and Kim said no they don't use Excel or at least the students don't okay and administrators and so forth might okay okay and yeah. so, so we don't have a list. I fully understand because I worked with programmers and they would say, you know, give me the specifications. <laughs> yeah. And so as much as possible, 
uh, what we did with this template this time, the first template that we had, as Jennifer will be able to tell you, was much less um, specific. So mm -hmm. I spent a great deal of time looking at what happened and, and some of the things that, so I said, hey, I'm going to make this as specific as possible. It may still have many questions that need to be answered, but uh, this is as close to a specification list as you will get, okay? The, the style guide and the template. Okay. Okay. okay no, that, that works. That, I, okay. I can work with that. And I just, like I said, I just have lots of, I have lots of yeah. questions all the time. Right, right. <laughs> so. Okay. Cool. Thank you. I'll let somebody else take over. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need to wait long enough until a question erupts, sometimes. And then other times you say, hey, it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, listen, our, our, our lines of, of communication are always open. Um, the emails are, are listed, um, I think, everywhere everywhere um, they're, they're not on this page maybe we'll put them on this page but um, everyone has access to everybody else and so the thing that the designers need to know right now to do is to work through the jumpstart orientation and to make sure they make their choices and let us know what their choices choices are in the discussion forum we have a discussion forum and that is located right here everyone can see my screen it's located right here and you pop right into your spring 2015 preferences uh, we have six in there so there are three people that uh, probably need to put their preferences in and that will let us know who's going to be in which group so we can have that done by the weekend and we'll, we can get to the off to the races on monday okay. all right so Yes. Yeah, may I make one final uh, one comment, Jason? Sure thing. That, um, when um, when the designers are looking at the uh, products that were pre that were uh, delivered uh, this past um, iteration, uh, many of the um, ideas were exciting, and uh, it, it, but I when it comes to the template, not all of them followed the template. Mm -hmm. So, um, you want to make sure that you follow the template. And number two, and maybe it's number one, I think if, I, if we were to talk to Courtney, it's number one. Make sure that your content is accurate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because uh, no matter how great the technology of things, you know, uh, moving in and out an animation and I would like to see more animation and more uh, things that can be done in PowerPoint but we certainly want to make sure that the content is accurate and I guess the third thing is that I'd like to see that the students have more opportunity to interact and practice because with learning theory it's clear that we want to have uh, that in order for students to learn they need to apply and not just be told so, okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I think that's a perfect uh, place to end. Uh, if you have any questions, again, please don't hesitate to email, shoot an email out. I'm going to try to get this uh, recording uh, bottled up and put into the top here as soon as I can, but I've got to drive back to Scranton tonight, so I don't know how that's going to okay. work. Um, <laughs> okay. But, but uh, I think that maybe, maybe Jen can put the recording up uh, first or up at all. Sounds good. Sounds good. Fantastic. Is there, is, what happens, Jason? Is there a link that comes out of Zoom um, on your end? Is that how it works? Yes. Yeah, so there's a huge file. I mean, it's going to okay. be it's going to be a a, a, a a large file. And what yeah. I usually do is I upload it to the drive, and then okay. I make a link. I, I create a link from the drive Perfect. into that's. But that just takes a, a while. So yep. I can probably do that while I'm in class. Okay. Sounds good. Which is in a minute. It's a half hour from now. So it's been fantastic. Thank you all for coming again. Looking forward to working with everybody. It's been fun meeting you. And take care and good night. Thank you. Good night. Jason, good night. thank yes. you. Wendy, thank you. Thank you.
Um, oh, hey, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jennifer, thank bye you. Bye. And, and all of the designers, thank you so much. This is just a labor of love. Uh, and I, gosh, uh, I, I, I know I speak for Kim and Courtney, how much we appreciate and we feel that we're blessed to have people who are willing to work like this to help us improve uh, what the students uh, are able to work on. So thank you. Fantastic. Take care, all. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Thanks, Dr. Yu. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>